Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? This is the, it's not really a second part to the previous vlog. It's more just I'm picking up where I left off because the things just got too long. So I, I have to do an intro because there wasn't an intro because I thought it was just me. What? Don't worry about it. I'm just going to cut right into things. So here we go. I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff. Lots of things over here. I'm getting this whole, this used to be like my serenity garden set up. I have a bunch of different plants, mostly Clarence plants. So like calm down about how they look. This is the one the palm tree fell on. And this is the area that I like to work with for that. I'll put the containers back and fill it in and get it nice and lush and pop flowers and probably impatience where I can. And yeah, so that's what's going on there. Unfortunately, I can't do it right now because someone just called me and they need a ride. They're having some car trouble. So I'll be picking back up in the morning which I don't even have to tell you, but it's gonna be sunny here in the morning. So you're gonna be like, what the heck happened? So that's what that's about. I also think I can go ahead and move the Monstera probably. It's getting a decent amount of light and I think it should be okay to go over into its new spot. We'll see. And another thing real quick, part of doing that is involved, everything's, there's a process. There's a method behind the madness. The caladiums, the heat's kicking in. They're not liking it here anymore, which I knew might happen. I've talked about why I can't put them in the front because the big tree's gone that used to shade them. I'm thinking I'm probably going to go ahead and lift these now, or I guess tomorrow morning, and move those over into that area. It's nice and shady. It'll be really full. I think they'll do better there. And then I can finally, I had, still have, tons of annuals that I was going to put over here, which is why there's plants on the ground and stuff all over the place, because they're supposed to be in here. It's just, you know, that tree dying really threw things off this year. And that pine tree, I don't, it's not looking good every day, looking worse. I know I mentioned, like I did this to show you how it was leaning. You can kind of see it better from here, how that's, it's struggling. I don't know, that's all from wind. And maybe when Barry came through here, even though Barry was not very windy, maybe it was strong enough that it just kind of did it in a little bit. It was too much water and the tilt and broken roots and whatnot. I'm not sure. It's an ugly pine tree, so I'm not super heartbroken over it, but it provides a lot of privacy. I mean, mostly just from the side of the neighbor's house, but still, I, that's the whole reason that it's there. But it would probably look better to plant another one of the um, Norway spruces right next to it. It's going to be hard to plant something up there, though, now that that wall's there. I don't know. Or a magnolia. Could go from the Bayberry to a magnolia to a... This, I don't, we don't even need to talk about this right now. I don't know what's happening with it. And apparently it's going to rain. That came out of nowhere. Yeah, what is this? Well, that should be fun. So it looks like I wasn't going to be doing those planters tonight anyways. You know, I talk about the weather a lot, but it's because I just, I'm fascinated by the weather. Don't know why everybody has weather, but it just, I don't know. I think it's cool. It's so powerful. So much power and nature and uniqueness. People ask about my climate a lot, so may as well talk about it get an idea of like how things are doing uh, with the way things are but you know every summer has been pretty unique the last four or five years so it's kind of hard to be like the weather's like this when really it's like yeah I don't know it changes every year didn't used to but it does now oh there was just some really cool lightning it's such a waste of time trying to get lightning on camera because it has a mind of its own you know you don't know where it's going to come from Where's the lightning? Oh, I'm glad I'm not over there. Oh, I'm gonna be over there in just a few minutes though. That kind of sucks. The second I hit the pause on the record, there were like three giant bolts. I am on it. Oh, that's a really big hawk. I'm just talkative. That's what's happening right now. I know nobody cares about any of this. It's just, I'm just, just chatting with everybody. You can feel the wind on the cart. See, there was another one right when I hit the pause. There was another big lightning strike. This, I was hoping to go skinny, I mean, just swimming. I was hoping to go swimming tonight, and I, well, not now. That's okay, though. Another time. The rule, 20, 30 minutes after lightning strikes, like, do you have to go 30 minutes without seeing any lightning or thunder? I'm not sure. It's not a risk I'm willing to take, though. Oh, no, and right before I left, I, I, had, I pulled the plants out from around that big palm tree, because I was getting ready to plant... Well, I hope the wind doesn't blow that over. Okay, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. It took very, very closely. You can see the sheets of rain moving around from the storm. Okay, well now they're starting to fall on me, so I'm officially done out here. Oh, do you see it? 
Look at the rainbow. I don't think you can see it. The sky is orange. Everything's orange. It's not, not showing through. It looks so cool outside right now. So neat. It, it's really, it's orange in person, I swear. Oh, See, and it's like 8.30, still raining. Isn't that cool? I really wish there was some way to make this come through on camera because it's very bizarre. It feels very eerie. It is so cool. You can kind of see the roof of that house, how it's glowing. Neat. Oh, now you can see the orange. Look, everything looks like it's on fire. It's, it's like 8.30. It's, it's supposed to be dark right now. I mean, it will be soon. It's the sunset through the edge of the storm. But it's so cool. Doofus in front of me just sat through the entire yellow light. No one was coming. It's fine. Whatever. No rush. Not whatever. No, it's not fine. Pay attention. Look at that. That's so cool. It's like the earth has on an Instagram filter. Okay, this rainbow is very distracting. There shouldn't be rainbows when I'm driving. It just, it doesn't work out well. See how the light on my phone keeps shifting? It's dark ahead of me. I'm going south now. But that's still going on over there. You know, it, usually a sunset doesn't get me if there's not a lot of like pink and purple and stuff, but this is, it's got a glow to it. It's kind of blinding, a little bit odd. It's just, it's so diverse. I was just talking about how I love the weather. It's probably really boring to all of you by now, but I'm fascinated. It wasn't even supposed to be raining. Barry's gone. Barry's been gone. That was nothing compared to what just happened this past hour and a half. I guess we got lucky here in, at least where I live in St. Louis, they were saying there's like 21,000 power outages. I don't know if that's here, like statewide. They had said something about heat storms yesterday. I looked at the radar. This stretched all the way from Iowa down to Arkansas. Now, I guess that that could... I don't think so. I don't think that's a heat. I think they were just very wrong. Typically, y'all Floridians, Southerners, you know what I'm talking about. You get the heat storms in the afternoon, clouds show up, rains for a little bit, and then it's gone. This is just a storm, and apparently very bad. I mean, I knew it was bad. There's a lot of flooding. Driving got really scary for a while. Obviously, I wasn't filming that because there were some parts of the road that were scary. I'm wondering how things held up at home. So we'll find out in a little bit, if at least if it's still light when I get there, we can talk about it. No, still have power here. How you guys doing? Hey, baby bird. Not gonna say hi? Oh, all right. I can take a hint. Hi, Tobes. Yeah, some palm trees blew over, but not the big one. There's no limbs down. Everything's fine. Not in the sense that, you know, those orchids that it blew over on top of, but I think it'll be okay. The storms are still unclear for tonight, so I'm going to wait on picking things up until the morning because, you know, there's more wind. I might just blow them over. I blew my fertilizer can. It was very... Apparently, they were just saying on the news, the wind gusts where I live were up to about 60 miles an hour. Very windy. Okay, I was I was getting ready to go swim because I there hasn't been any thunder or lightning There was just lightning so bright that it actually like startled me and you know you get pretty used to the storms When you live in the Midwest and that's so I don't get startled by lightning very often, but it like made me kind of ugh Step back a little bit. So I guess no swimming. I was gonna get in and get all these leaves out. Look at how full You probably can't tell it's too full. There's too much water in here it needs to be drained down a little bit. So maybe I'll do that before I go to bed, but definitely no skin swimming. Good morning. Had to do a lot of cleanup. There was a juniper in here. It's been a thorn in my side. It had mostly browned out and died from a winter burn. And um, I'm allergic. So I was like, you gotta go. Cause I have, I have been avoiding going over there and weeding and everything just because it makes my skin kind of swell up and sting, which is happening right now, even though I put on gloves and I wrap my wrist, the oil still kind of got through. But now I can get in and weed this area out, which is good, because it's been bugging me for a long time. By a long time, I mean like a week. I accidentally broke a leaf on the a la cage and pulled it. The thing was like eight feet tall, so I mean, it was kind of hard to get in there. There's still one on this side, but it's in better shape. It just has a little bit of damage on it, not as much as the other. 
it'll come out too, but like I can only take so much in one day, so for now, it's just the one. I've done a little bit more inspecting on the white pine here. It doesn't look like it's any type of fungus or bacteria. Normally there's like um, some small black striping on the needles that are declining when that's the case. Not seeing that in there at all. I did also notice while I was over there, giant vine. I need to find the source of that and get that pulled out. These things, with all the rain and everything, it's like the the weeds are just, they're not weeds. I mean, it's a native vine, I'm pretty sure, but you know what I'm saying. They're growing like crazy. Uh, I'm thinking this is probably like white pine decline, eastern white pine decline. It happens from like the soil being compacted or just damage to the roots of some sort. And I think I mentioned that I think that that's what happened here is the storms just bent this tree and it's just, it's not doing well. So chances are in the next two weeks that's going to die. It's not an iron situation. Uh, there aren't any bores or anything in the trunk that I've been able to find at least. So it's just sad, but it's what it is. Okay, uh, so uh, here's what happened. I had to redo things over here. When I was moving some stuff around earlier in the day and, you know, the storms and everything last night, I noticed that there was just this ring of mud that went, like, from right here all the way through. You know, just a lot of rain last night. Tons and tons of rain, and the ground's just saturated. Anyways, I went through, decided I needed to get that cleaned up. You can't just have mud all over the place. So I had to retrench this out, which I know looks ugly. I need to get some gravel to put in there. I'm not doing that right now. It's getting late, so... That's not happening tonight. Maybe not in this vlog, actually. I don't know. But the alarming thing was that I, the all, all of the plants over here, the entire ground, everything had shifted. So I thought it was kind of weird when I was pointing out the juniper and whatnot. I was looking at the Luca Kaja, the all, ugh, the Thai giant. I'm gonna keep calling it a Kala Kaja for now. They were leaning, both of them. I was like, well, that's really bizarre. And I, that's when I noticed. So I was like, oh my gosh, everything I've planted over here everything has shifted forward. So I was like, I need to get roots in the ground and not have this all exposed. And none of this was meant to be like this. This used to be, had a gentle slope to it, nowhere near this high. This whole entire area got dug out with the last pump. It's a whole long story. Next spring, I'm gonna have to just gut the whole area and get in here with a shovel and regrade all of this. And it goes all the way down, all the way down into the yard and fix that. That's going to be a really time-consuming project. So that's not happening right now. There are just mosquitoes everywhere. So I went ahead and I was like, okay, I just got to get this cleaned up, retrench this out. So I pulled out all the dune grass and everything that was over here because it was clogging up the drainage and it just had to be done. And I'm okay with it. It's not perfect, but it'll do. The, you know, there's a lot of clearance plants in here. The Cordelin fruticosas, those are the ones I picked up for like a buck at Lowe's last winter. I threw a Heliconia in here, an Oleander, this one has pink flowers. Popped the Bracken's Brown Beauty Magnolia back here where the Juniper was just to kind of fill things in a little bit. It's not going to do a great job, but it's fine for now. I have castor beans here, one here and a couple over there. Within, uh, I don't know, a few weeks, those are going to come up and they'll fill in this area on their own. And so will this banana. This banana is just a stick right now because it was back with the stuff that has that, um, uh, the sooty mold I was talking about earlier. So you need to trim the rest of that foliage off that I've already sprayed and whatnot. It'll take off and be okay, but that's gonna fill in that area. I'll pull the magnolia out. It doesn't need to be there. That magnolia is actually intended for a planter on the front porch, and that's what I'm going to use it for. That's what I got it for. You can kind of see the base of that uh, Kalakaja over here. So it's leaning from where the ground shifted. There's just the only thing I can th could think of doing without damaging those colocages was to get in here and start filling in, which I wanted to do anyways, but I was going to try and work more perennials in. But I mean, this looks good, even though the plants are a little bit ratty. That's okay. They're clearance. They'll fill out. I did pull a whole bunch of weeds. There's still more. That's, you know, a never ending process with gardening. So that's not the end of the world. I don't like to like go nuts with weeding. I like to sort of spread it out. I do a little bit every day. So that's okay. I'm going to put some coleus in here, hopefully without disturbing the base of this Kalakaja. Cause that Kalakaja, you can see this is where the ground from here and over, everything just kind of, it's like there's a miniature mudslide. So it need, that's another good reason to get mulch and everything in here. So I need to do that. And the, those, ugh, those Kalakajas, they're just not as sturdy as they used to be, not the Thai Giants. So that's what ended up happening instead of me doing that area I was talking about doing before the 
storms rolled in and everything. This had to take precedence because the, I mean, it was just mud everywhere. It was disgusting. And so, yeah, try and get to the store maybe in the morning and get some pebbles and a few bags of mulch. It's supposed to be around 100 tomorrow, so it's going to be taking it easy. And uh, I'll pick back up then if that's even what ends up happening. I kind of got to put things together and see what's going on. I also think I might want to take my trimmers and clean out the old foliage on these cordelins. I don't like how that looks. Oh, I'm always talking about how... Yeah, look at that. See those hydrangeas? How they light up at nighttime. Isn't that beautiful? Here, I guess I could flip it around. Okay, apparently that's a little bit steamy. Yeah, well... You get the point. So bright and reflective and pretty. And that was, look at, you see how humid it is? Everything's all fogged up. If you remember, when I planted up the petunias, the Super Tunia Vista bubblegums, I had debated blending those in with the Super Tunia Vista silverberries, only because I liked the idea of that white petunia reflecting at nighttime. In hindsight, maybe I should have. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe I can still throw them in there. I don't know. I think the nurseries are pretty much out of them. Okay, so I was getting ready to come over here and sit in these steps. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. There is an extremely, extremely large spider over here. I don't know why I'm getting closer. Are you going to be able to see it? I want to show you, but I also really don't want to get close. Good morning. Oh, no. That doesn't help at all. It's early. I'm at Home Depot. 7 a.m., 82 degrees. Gonna go inside and get some sip. You'll see. I know I typically go to Lowe's for everything, but I need those petunias. And uh, from that foot planter video where I got the wrong ones, this is where they had those waves. So I'm gonna see if they have them here first. Ah, would you look at that? I've been drying some poblano seeds at home because I never see poblanos for sale already started. Well, this would make more sense since there's only so much time left in the growing season. So maybe I'll go ahead. I love poblanos. You guys love poblanos? They're so good. And this time of year, everything's probably going to be looking a little bit shabby. Just going to have to sort of accept that and find the best that I can, which would not be that one. This one's looking a little bit better. Anybody in here got multiple growths? No? Okay. These, I'll just get these two. Um, expensive rocks much? Jeez, Home Depot. I've never, I've always gotten the rock from Lowe's. I can't remember what it's called, but it looks similar to this. So I think this would work the stuff in the bag. Obviously it looks nothing like the stones that I'm seeing that have fallen around here. See? But I mean that's just normal because the bags have moisture in them. I feel like that looks pretty similar to what I have in my yard. It might be a little bit lighter. Um, what are you doing out here? You're not supposed to be out here. You're naked. You don't have your collar on. You be my helper? Okay, well hold on. We got it. We have to follow protocol. Come on. Go on. Toby. Okay, now sit. Sit. Good boy. Alright, you're free. Now you can come. There you go. You're not supposed to cross that line without permission. I was happy to see they had the Bonide Burnout at Home Depot, and I've been wanting to give this a try. I saw or at Garden Answers use this stuff, and I like the idea of having something that's not harmful to use for the... It's pretty obvious, right? What It's, it's supposed to be good stuff. So we will see. Okay, let's go ahead and get this done. I did also grab a flat of impatience. I <laughs> five bucks per six pack. Now they're bigger six. Oh man, and that one doesn't even have a plant in it. Oh, and this one's missing two, three. Okay, I'm actually going to be taking these back. Never mind. I'm gonna set these somewhere in the shade and be returning those because they're overpriced and they're missing a bunch of plants. Which I mean, I thought I, I guess I just I must have grabbed the wrong flat. Anyways, I'm going to put this down and uh, get that done. I got my Bluesboro, the <laughs> Budweiser, it's a St. Louis company. Uh, they, it's real dumb, but they played the Gloria song by one of the bats where they brew the beer. 
for like a day or something and they re it's dumb but it's from the stanley don't worry about it i don't really even drink beer it was just it's a collectible thing you want to be my helper toby you want to be my helper well come on come on come on because yeah you can see all the there's little tiny weeds popping up everywhere it's kind of hard to see back here i need to bury that drip line back down again but things where it's just kind of a pain to pull them when they're super tiny easier to spray those you having fun with the flowers toby you having fun with those flowers yeah rub on the oleander that's real smart he's good about leaving plants alone so this is really it's just from right here to right about this corner everything else already has gravel so that should help an awful lot of the drainage I mean, that's the whole point right That's not very good for the petunias, Tucker. What are you doing? What are you doing the petunias, Tuck? You gotta dry off? Yeah, I feel you, man. It's hot. It's real hot, isn't it? That pool feels good. You're just, just destroying. Just destroying everything. You're old. I'm gonna let you get away with everything. Alright. So the gravel's down. That looks much better. Pardon my poor cable management there. Gotta... Keep getting things organized a little bit. I see I missed a piece of dune grass that's in there and need to re -bit. Hey, Tuck. Do you had a good swim? Yeah, it's hot, right, Tuck? Oh, yeah, it's a little toasty. I actually think it feels pretty good. It's like 94, 95, but I've finally, finally, my body has adjusted. So that gravel, like I said, is in there. The There's still some dirt on some of these seashells down here because Tucker likes to pick them up and run off with them and chew on them which is fine, but then they, he brings them back to me all dirty, so I need to hose those off. So yeah, that should help with everything. I need to redirect my drip lines, but I'm gonna wait a little bit longer because I have some more stuff I have to do down in this direction on this berm, but that at least should have helped with the problem of everything running off. Normally I would prefer for there to be like a bit of a ditch in here for the gravel, but this slope, it's hard to show on camera, but it's very, very steep. And uh, I just couldn't quite achieve that, but I have been hosing the area down and mostly all of the dirt, the like runoff is still going back in under there into this because this is all drainage. It all goes to a drain. It's heavily planted. Nothing here is perennial really, I, I don't think. No, none of it's perennial. I would like, this whole area is getting a big facelift next year because the palm tree thing, it's cute and everything. I love the palm tree, but it's not, I'm not going to keep doing that. This entire area where the palm tree was put in, they dug everything up and just left a mountain of soil. And it, everything needs to be regraded. I've worked on it a bunch, but I just can't really do anything else without totally tearing everything out, which will happen in the spring. So that's why it's just annuals in here and tropicals. I'll probably bring the oleander inside and then of the alacajas come inside, maybe the tide giants will come in these have already opened up two leaves since i started this vlog but uh, they got kind of tattered and torn from me being in here and doing everything and i do like this calico rock i think it's pretty i don't know if it's worth five dollars a bag though that's some pretty pricey gravel this section here i've hosed off and it's still staying dusty that must have been an extra dirty bag of gravel oh i guess i should talk about what i put in here right plant channel <laughs> sorry well, the impatiens were already in here. These are just neon pink sun impatiens. There is a Hamelia patens back here. There's one on each side. I originally had mentioned when I did this area, I wanted something orange in the front, but it is just root ball right there, so it's pretty hard to dig. And I uh, was going to put some, like, uh, peachy keen verbena, the superbena from Proven Winners in there, if I could find it. And I haven't been able to find it, so that's not happening. Which is okay. I did have a little spot over here where I tucked in this other sun impatient. This variety is called Hot Coral. And uh, it's not really blooming right now. So it's kind of hard to show you what it looks like. But that will sort of fill out this spot right here. There's a little needle palm seedling under here that got buried from when they dropped that palm tree in there. So I unearthed that, that poor little thing. Right here, this is... Oh, it's so pretty, isn't it? And now Toby. Hey Tobes, how you doing? This cord is not plugged in. I have like a case that goes around it, and uh, so everything, just for safety, I unplugged it since everything's exposed. Toby, would you mind? You're really good at always being right where I need to be, bud. Yeah, I know. You're getting dirty. If you've noticed the lighting change, it is several hours later. When it's super hot outside, I like to 
do my work in the early morning and then take a break in the afternoon and get back to things in the evening time. So that's what happened there, just staying out of the afternoon sun, basically. But anyways, as I was saying, the Trafula Pink Globe Amaranth. Is that how you say it? Trafula? Trafula? Traf that's, that is a fun name. It's a proven winter's plant. This is an annual, I believe it is Hardy Zones 9 and up though. I've seen these in a lot of planters around and they, these things get really big. <laughs> they spread, they form like a giant ball and just have all these fun flowers that come out of the top that I'm sure are going to be a nightmare to get to focus. Oh, or maybe not. Okay, me have little faith, sorry. He hit 20 to 28 inches tall. Sorry, I have a dog licking. What? It was licking like right in weirdo. 20 to 28 inches tall and it'll come out kind of like a mound. Also gonna fill in, maybe too close to the sun, I'm patient, but I don't, it's fine, don't worry about it. Kind of late in the season here anyway, as far as planting is concerned. But I did want to make sure I had something in here for the bees and butterflies. That's one of the reasons I plant the Hamelia patens. I have some Asclepius that I want to tuck in here also somewhere along the line. I like that to be spread around throughout the garden, but I'll get to that at another time, I suppose. Just because, you know, I forgot about it. They had these uh, Cordelin fruticosas here. And so the idea here is that these uh, tide giants are going to come up. They don't come up too high. They're not an upright, like an alocasia, like these back here. They're a leucocasia. So it's kind of like in between a calocasia whose leaves are down like this and an alocasia who leaves their leaves are up like this. So they come up kind of like, I'm, they're just weird. But eventually, in like the next few leaves, they'll be up a little bit higher, and then those will be underneath it. And they won't be like compacted like that. But with the heat we're having right now, I'm okay with them being shaded a little bit. These are the cordon fruticosas I picked up in the winter time on clearance. So they were, you know, they're like a buck. So that's why they look like that. They have new growth on them. So I'm not too concerned about that. I only got them thinking I'd use them as filler plant anyways, because they were so cheap. There's also a Concolius there, and then Concolius Concolius. So that's this area in a nutshell. Was somewhat unexpected, wasn't really planning on doing this right now. I'm gonna try out that Proven Winners Burnout stuff right here, and then I'll, I mean, I could just gravel over it probably, but I, I wanna try it out right there. Then I'm gonna gravel the rest of that area all the way down. Have a big old pile of like leaf debris to clean up. There's always stuff to do, you know? But I think that this looks much nicer, much more tidy. Looks really good too. When I do this area with perennials, hold on, I'm gonna wait for a paint to pass by. Pass by? Pass by. Oh, before I continue on, there is, I also threw in one of these heliconias. This is a Lady Die heliconia. Helicona sideracorum. Lady Die. That's the variety. As I was saying, perennial wise with this area, when the palm tree's gone and everything's been leveled back out, I know I talked about putting bamboo in here. The situation with the Japanese maple out front dying and then uh, having to have other trees removed in the backyard and now this pine tree's going, I just, it financially, I was like, I can't, I can't do the bamboo. It's so expensive. So that's going to have to wait for another year. But this would be a really great area to do a bamboo grove in because it's somewhat landlocked. I'd have to put a barrier in. Really, when you do a barrier, you're supposed to do it in the entire area. Hello, cicadas. I swear, I think sometimes they hear me talking and they're like, we want to talk too. Let's get in on this. They don't know. It's this, this isn't their party. Anyways, you're supposed to completely enclose your bamboo. But I know I would need to run a barrier here because bamboo runners could definitely go across this pathway. But I'm thinking the driveway should be fine. And then I would just need to put a... I'm just like, it's, sometimes it's just fun to think about what could be as I'm looking at something that I think is beautiful. Messy right now, things need to fill in, and I'm, I'm still grading back there and over here, that's why I haven't graveled that in yet. But thinking out loud, I do think a bamboo grove would be pretty in here. I could go with a clumping bamboo. There are several varieties that would work well, but they're very, very, very pricey, so I would rather not. So like one of the other options I was thinking about doing a Bracken's Brown Beauty Magnolia, not necessarily right here, but a few more feet back, and then doing a row of some type of lily around, probably mixing the pineapple lilies, the Eucamus bicolor that have that dark red foliage on them, and then some crinum lilies. And with that, maybe some needle palms or sable miners, and try and get some other plants in that have a little bit more texture in the background. And then I just, it would be a little bit more formal but it would still be kind of weird to not fit in here, like in the St. Louis area at all, and getting the Kalakajas and whatnot. I think that would look really cool. 
But for now, I'm gonna sit back and just enjoy what it is, which is pretty. I like it. Especially considering I just kind of had to toss it together. So it worked out well. And tomorrow, <laughs> I will get to the area over there that I had talked about doing in the beginning of the video, which was going to be the end of the last video. I'm glad I sat down. I came home from the Home Depot. You guys saw that I dropped the bag of gravel and whatnot. And I was like, you know what? I have no idea how long this vlog is. So I sat down in front of the computer to see like how long it was. And I was already up to over an hour's worth of footage. So I'm glad I did that. So I'd know that I need to cut things. Because I can't upload a two hour long vlog. It's just, it's, there's no way, I'm sorry. It'd take way too long to get that uploaded to YouTube and everything. Oh, pine tree update? I'm pretty sure it's dead. It looks like a dead pine tree, right? Is what it is that uh, eastern white pine decline, once it starts, you can't really do anything about it, so. Oh well. Don't know what to put in that place, or if I even could with that wall there. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's gonna leave a really big open gap there that's going to be very bothersome to me, though. Maybe I'll stick some castor beans over there. That could because they grow really fast. So I should probably get a hold of some castor beans and get them potted up to get them going and then I can move them over. I'm, just, I'm trying to be proactive here. This to me is a bigger deal than the Japanese maple in the backyard. Because I'm never, or in the front yard. I'm never in my front yard. I don't care. Back here, I'm out here all the time. So, and uh, Tucker's knocking over palm trees. He gets real hyper when he gets swimming. Get swimming, go swimming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a bummer. But I don't really know what to do about it. This has been such a weird summer. It's 64 degrees outside. Oh, that feels nice. I've been on mushroom watch in this area. I figure with all the shavings and the old decaying matter and the mulch, like where are the mushrooms? They fascinate me. Nothing. Oh, well. Good morning, pumpkin. What you doing? Hi. Okay. Where are my dogs? My dogs are asleep. Where are they, Pumpkin? Did we get up before the dogs? That doesn't happen very often. I know how to wake the dogs up. At least. Usually the sound of their food hitting the bowl wakes them up, but I'm not. Doggies. Oh, there he is. Hey, Tuck, you gonna get your food? You wanna go get your food? Yeah, good boy. You can eat, you're free. You're free. It's okay. You you don't have to do the things Toby has to do. Here, you got old. You can just hit, eat your food. Yeah, I know. Eat your food. You're free. This is a new thing that's very weird to me. This is, you know, a Labrador. They don't, they're not, they don't hesitate to eat. Where's Toby? This is very bizarre. Why aren't the dogs up? Are you guys enjoying this? This abrupt change from gardening to it's freezing cold and raining and where are my dogs? Toby! Where's the Toby? Need to put new carpeting in here and paint. You know, anybody else like me or you just, you're outside so much that you don't really care as long as it's clean. That's sort of my thing. Meanwhile, this poor thing, poor pumpkin's been here waiting for food this whole time. Pumpkin still hasn't picked out a wet food. Thank you everyone for all of your tips and suggestions and everything, but what has been working is just putting some water in the wet food. Yeah, there you go, Pumpkin. There you go. See, she'll drink that. And she's actually, she's back on her normal schedule with drinking water. So I'm not as concerned as I was before. Okay, where's your brother? Should I be worried? This has never happened before. Where's Toby? <laughs> Where's Toby? Yeah, good morning. You do, you got a big ol' eye boogie. I still love you, but I know you're gonna wipe it on. You're trying to scare me. I don't appreciate it. Go get your food. Go on. Yeah, good boy. You wait for your food. You're free. There you go. That is so weird. I've never had to wake him up to make him come get his food before. You still drinking? Good girl, pumpkin. Not seeing any storm damage, so that's good. Yesterday, here's what happened. So I was working down there, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go work over there. Tucker pooped in the pool. He hasn't done that since he was a puppy. I used to have a little peach tree, a dwarf peach tree. It was like a graft, and it was right where Tucker could reach it. And he would go and eat the peaches off of that tree. 
he'd just walk up to it and eat a peach. And then he'd go swimming and then it did, peaches didn't sit well with him. So I had to get rid of my peach tree. So that took some time out of things. And then I had plans, went to go see The Lion King, which was really good. And um, now everything's all wet. So I'm just gonna cut my losses and say, you know, I think, I think, I think we're done here. I'm seeing the amount of rain we had, which is a lot. I need to go drain the pool, like now, because if the water gets too high, it can get behind that liner and lift it up. So that's not good. So this is probably, I don't know, a few inches of rain. Oh, goodness. I did get the slug and bug killer down over here, so that's gonna help with the snails. I think this is from the snails. I don't think that that's hail, but I don't, I haven't seen them over here. I know they're here though, because they're everywhere else. I don't know why the snails wouldn't be here as well. I'm sure they are. Or maybe the sprays of dunce. Oh, I haven't really sprayed over here though. So I don't know. The only sprays, I've done like an, in, uh, the lawn spray for the mosquitoes and then the mealybug sprays. Otherwise, I'm trying to take it really easy on the chemicals, so I don't, I don't know. So just gonna assume, I'm still assuming that's snail damage. The holes are too erratic. Usually hail, it's like big old chunks punched out of the foliage. But look at how much everything's loving the rain. I mean, my goodness, this is ridiculous. If I had known when I planted these years, why are we barking? That's not necessary, what are you barking at? You don't need to be barking, stop barking. Had I known when I planted, because I planted this whole thing up with the uh, um, Pedicets japonicus gigantea and then the variegated ones. And I just popped one of the giganteas in here and I was like, I don't know what that's going to be like. I want to see. Because the Pedicets, like with hot climates, you just never know. The variegated variegata looks like this and it will grow all over. It's much smaller. It's still a big plant. And uh, they have, I mean, golden variegated leaves. It reminds me of how a pothos will grow through a big patch down in the tropics. Pretty. But I mean, this is just glorious. That's enough of that. I said I was going to wrap things up. There was something I wanted to talk about, but I can't remember what it was. And just to clear, it's just, it's too wet. I don't want to, I'm going to get disgusting. So it's, things need to dry for a couple days. So that has to wait. But yeah, this vlog, because I already edited the majority of it. And I was like, it, this is ridiculous. My focus, not there this week. It was like, hey, here's this plant. Let me tell you about it. Never mind. There's a butterfly. Like it was just not there. So this is not, what do I even title this? It's not going to be like building a, because this is, I didn't really, uh, this is just a fun rambly vlog for the OGs. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, the crinum. This is crinum lily persephone. Has a bud coming up. It does not want to focus, but this is a really nice tall bud on it. This crinum lily, I think it's rated hardy to zone 6B, which is where I am, but we had a really, we've had a few really bad winters. There's morning glory vines. I keep pulling them up, they're everywhere. Anyways, it's been very cold hardy here. It's done very well. So that I'll make sure to show that in next week's vlog. And that's not even next week. It's just a few days from now. So when that blooms. It's never in bloom in time for a garden tour. So I don't think it'll be in the August one. So I want to make sure to show it when it opens up. Hey, the fish are kind of at... Nope, they're gone. Eh, there's some of them. They spend a lot of time hiding. They're doing a good job eating up the bug larvae. Kind of. It's getting better as they keep having babies. There's some fry over here. So as their numbers multiply, they're getting better about eating up those bugs. I, mean, I could just throw the like mosquito dunks in here too. That would be an option, but I mean, they, they for the most part seem to be doing a good job eating them. But yeah, it's supposed to be pretty cool all week, which means once things have dried out, oh, I'm gonna be doing so much planting and I'm really excited. So I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, everything's just going beautifully for you. And thank you all for your tips in the last video with the cats and the cat food. I do appreciate it. She's doing much better. Her appetite and her water intake just kind of tanked. I think it was the stress of having to be at the emergency vet and going back and having stitches removed. And you know, the little thing can throw a cat off, but she's starting to get back into her routine. So I'm not as concerned. I have all my social media linked down below so you can give me a follow there. I'm on Instagram more than anything else. 
That's where I keep things updated and it's a good place to get a hold of me. And if you like the video, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel and I appreciate it, so thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell so I upload multiple times a week and that way you know new videos come out. What are you doing? You're being a weirdo today, Tucker. He keeps, he keeps rubbing, I need to just pop this thing up. He keeps knocking this palm tree over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing, baby.